I want to show you guys how to make crock pot mashed potatoes. Yes, mashed potatoes made in a crock pot. You will no longer have to stand over the stove, just whipping it and whipping it forever, having to check on them. And you can make, depending on the size of your slow cooker, anywhere from like five to 10 pounds of potatoes, freeze them in the freezer, and you will not have to make mashed potatoes for a really long time. It's been almost six months since the last time I made mashed potatoes, unless it was for a video. I love it because it makes dinner happen so much faster. And this is one of the things I always tell you guys meal prep your dinners, not chopping one of every single thing and eating the same thing for the week because I do not like to eat the same food every single day for a week, but have little things like this that you made in your freezer. So whenever you wanna have dinner and you wanna include that, boom, defrost it, done. All right, let's make it. Okay. In our bowl, I have six potatoes that I washed and peeled. If you do wanna leave the skin on, it's really just up to personal preference how you like your mashed potatoes. If you wanna leave some of the skin off, as you can see, I left some little pieces here and there because I just don't care. <laughs> mashed potatoes are mashed potatoes to me, skin or skinless, skin off. Anyway, wash and peel them. The one way to keep them from turning brown and kind of ugly, even just like an apple when you're peeling them, is to leave it in a bowl of, this is just like room temperature water, and keep rinsing them as you are peeling them. So once you have that, one by one, I'm just gonna start by chopping them and I'm gonna toss them back in this water so that they don't turn brown. And if they do, do not worry about it. There's nothing wrong with them. It just happens when they oxidize. It's the same thing that happens when an apple hits the air, they oxidize and turn brown. It's normal, it happens. All right, let's go chop them. With our bowl in the sink here, once you have your potatoes chopped, you wanna rinse them until the water runs pretty much clear. If it's a little bit cloudy, it just means there's still some starch in there. And if you don't have the time to fully rinse them and rinse them out multiple times, don't even worry about it because they're still gonna taste good. Okay, so now we can strain these and we'll go back to our crock pot. Okay, you guys ready? This could not be easier. We're gonna add two bay leaves just for flavor. Then we're gonna add our peeled and drained potatoes. This is like a medium crock pot, definitely not large, but also not small. Then we're gonna add a cup and a half of some chicken broth, mine's homemade, but whether you have beef or even water or vegetable, that works too. And lastly, we'll add one teaspoon of some salt. My broth that I make is never salted or seasoned. So that's why I'm adding a little bit more salt than I would. Now we're gonna put the lid on. We're gonna cook it on high for four hours and then we'll come back. Four hours later, it definitely looks like almost nothing has happened. I like to go in about halfway through and just give it a little toss just to make sure everything is nicely coated. Clearly they are falling apart but this is perfect. Now that these are completely cooked, we're gonna turn the crock pot off. We're gonna get some oven mitts because these handles are really, really hot. Then we're gonna strain our potatoes. We wanna save that broth because personally, I'm gonna make something after this using that broth and it's gonna be so delicious. And yes, there will be a video on that as well. But you really wanna save that liquid because this liquid obviously was flavored broth, but now it has extra starch in it, which is gonna be perfect for dinner time. But if you were just making mashed potatoes and didn't want to save the broth, feel free to just toss it. Now I went ahead and strained our potatoes. That's why the crock pot looks ugly. I'm going to add three tablespoons of some butter. Okay. Pretend you guys didn't see me just leave that peel on there. Then to the butter, while it's slowly melting, you do not have to worry about putting it on the stove and letting it melt. If you want to, to make it happen quicker, you absolutely could, but this is a crock pot after all, and it will do the trick. It just takes a little bit of time. Then we're gonna add about a third of a cup of some heavy cream. Feel free to use half and half. I would say just maybe use about two tablespoons since it is a little bit thinner. Then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of some sour cream. And I'm just gonna briefly give this a little mix in here just to kind of make it easier and so I don't get as much splatter when I add in the potatoes. And the good thing is since the crock pot was on high, it is slowly melting. It's taking, you know, obviously a lot longer than the stove would, but it's happening. Now to this, I'm gonna add some seasoning. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of some freshly cracked black pepper. I always tell you guys, cracking it yourself tastes so much better and it just looks so much prettier too. Then I have this Parmesan and garlic seasoning from Aldi. It was their street corn little quadrant of seasonings. If you have fresh Parmesan, fresh Parmesan cheese and Italian seasoning, you could add about a tablespoon of that, which is what I'm gonna do. It really just depends. I mean, if you just wanna keep it simple with salt and pepper and then season whenever it comes time for you to actually serve these, if you're gonna portion them out in the freezer, you could absolutely do it that way. And honestly, I'd highly recommend doing it that way so you can flavor them however you want per each meal you're gonna have. 
but I mean, Parmesan and garlic, I feel like works with anything mashed potato related. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Then we'll just give it one more stir before we add in our potatoes. And if you're wondering why we strain the liquid from our potatoes, it's that we don't want to have them separate. When you have too much moisture in mashed potatoes, that's when you end up with like a super soupy mashed potato. And I don't want them to be goopy. I like a little bit of chunk and give in my mashed potatoes. Then we'll just pour our mashed potatoes in. And now we can either, they are pretty, pretty soft. So I can probably just do this with my silicone scraper, but if you wanna break out a potato masher, you can. And I just might just to make it a little bit easier and prettier. Okay, we're gonna go with a mashed potato masher. A mash, a potato. We're gonna go with a potato masher because it just works. And if you guys are wondering also why I added the seasoning, but I didn't add any salt, because if you guys remember in the beginning, we already salted our broth and our potatoes to start, which is good because then the potatoes are actually fully able to absorb all of that salt. So you wanna taste for salt at the end and feel free to, well, you we can't really take any seasoning out, but you can always add more if you need to. And it's also important to save the broth just in case you don't like your mashed potatoes as thick and you want to thin it out and you don't feel like adding more sour cream or heavy cream. Now you just top with a little bit of parsley and some Parmesan garlic seasoning. And that is it. Crockpot mashed potatoes in four hours.